Hello, welcome to day three of series 11, Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. Our sketch today is by Debbie Norton Burton, and I will have links below the video for all of that. Hello, crafty friends, Amanda here, and I have started a new kind of series that I'm doing to give me inspiration or take some of the decision making out of what pictures I'm going to scrapbook next. So during Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, I am rolling the dice, and the first roll of six tells me which bin that I'm going to pull my photo photos out of. Oh, this could be interesting because um, these are big boulders of photos. Like this one is a house remodel that we did to our California house. So um, this could be interesting. So let's just see what our second roll gets us and we'll know what our photos are gonna be. So I'm gonna roll one die. Ooh, we got a five. So this is one, two, three, four. Oh, it's gonna be farm from 2011. What photos are these? Oh, these will just be fun. My sister-in-law, Kelly, would go around and just take photos um, of different things and it inspired me and so I started doing that actually this is a duplicate so this is the Mackinac Bridge it's not the farm I'm actually gonna I think put that in a different location but I will do something with these four photos because this is summertime June of 2011 all right I'm gonna go pull some papers I'll be right back okay I'm back and I have decided these are the four photos that I'm gonna use um, one of them was a duplicate and I didn't need two of those and I was looking at our barns and we had this red kind of burnt orange um, siding that was used kind of for the door frames and that and I thought that the wood grain from the old Timberline collection would be perfect and then I went and pulled some stamps that sunshine arrow stamp I pulled because if you know anything about farming especially in hay season you make hay when the sun shines and that is no joke and then I thought this cute little stamp with all of the animals would be fun to have. So here I'm going to start with that wood grain paper from Backcountry. And I'm just trying to lay out the photos. I'll put a, a sample of the sketch that I'm following because this is the Christie's 30 Days of Sketches, Christie's Beautiful Life that she does in March, June, October, I believe, three times a year. So I flip that paper over. I kind of like the green on the background of it. It's going to allow that plaid to show up a little better. And because I have big photos, I don't need a full strip. So for paper economy, I cut just these, I think they were three inches wide and then half inch strips um, so that it looks like it's a full piece of paper behind there. And then I'm going to try to balance it in here with the photo, but because the smaller photo is just of one of our fields with round bales in it and we didn't actually make a lot of round bales but they look really cool in the field um, i'm trying to put that on there but it needed kind of a buffer and right now i'm not feeling this combination so i will see what else i can find all of the supplies we'll be using are going to be in the description under this video even if they're retired i think sometimes if you want to find that or it's just perfect for something you can go on eBay or search for other makers that might have a used set for you. So I will include all of those products in the description. This circle just happened to be in the Dreamin' paper that I picked out. And then this blue with the leaves on it is also from Dreamin'. So I like the blue sky with that blue from the Dreamin' pack, how it's working. And now I feel like I was just too green blue and just that pop of, I think it was called barn red, but it's a rustic barn red from that backcountry paper works so well with the red cow barn in the background and then the door section for what we called the old barn. And here I am going to go ahead and color all of these images on the stamp so that I can cut them out on my scan and cut. And I'm using true blue large or the light green blend earth brown blend plus the earth brown shades pale pink blend true black gold yellow blend dark red blend and burnt orange blend are the colors that i got out i will have chapter titles under here so if you don't want to watch my coloring feel free to skip right ahead 
to the next chapter and then it will take you back to kind of I've cut things out on the scan and cut and we're now ready to assemble. One thing that I will say about the coloring here on the horse especially is by coloring that back leg now I can go over it again with the marker and it will put down on the same color another layer which will just kind of shade it for you automatically. It's not as easy to see on the camera but in real life it absolutely shadows that back leg. If you're new to my channel I have not um, caught the bug for coloring in great detail and blending. I will do a little bit of blending here on the uterus of the cow but otherwise I'm a simple color it in kind of girl. So taking black and doing the eyes and the hooves and then on the lamb I will go back to the black because I'll have one of the black face lambs. I don't know all of the different species of lambs, their names. I do know some are better for collecting their wool for spinning and making clothing and others are better for other uses. I'll just leave it that way. And here I am using the dark shade of, I believe the earth brown blend. So it looks kind of black here on, on video to me, but it's definitely brown. And then I doing the face and we didn't own cows at the farm, but we had a beautiful 40 acre cow pasture with um, the formal cow barn. So we would rent out our pasture and barn. And a lot of times we would help them feed the cows and bring them up for their nutrients. And they were so gentle and have beautiful brown eyes. There, I don't know if you noticed on the cow, I did grab another, that's the pale pink blend, so that I did the lighter color of the earth brown, and then I blended it down into the pale pink. And here on the rooster, I'm just kind of having fun with him. I'm doing multiple shades of brown. I'm going to do some red shades. I put that little blop in the corner just because I wanted to see how dark it was. I didn't want to lose the details of the feather. And since I had stamped it in the mocha ink instead of a black, I just want to make sure that was still going to come through. And I'm using the gold as my yellow blend. It's just, it's to me, it's more hair and feather like. And this is where I'm talking about for the black face sheep. Um, if you watch Wallace and Gromit at all, those are the kind they have on their show. But um, sheep lambs are so much fun. They just, they can spring straight up in the air. So there you can see how my scan and cut cut the shapes. I did leave a 0 .04 border around them. I just did a direct cut. I have a video where I do some explaining of how to use the scan and cut and I will post that link below. So if you have any questions, you can see that. And here I'm just trying to audition where I want these animals on the layout, kind of what is going to work. I don't want to cover anything up. We don't have um, a lot of piles of hay. We always did windrows and then the machinery would clean it up and make them into bales. But uh, horses and sheep, we would open a bale and throw it in the pen with them and they just loved the fresh hay. And sometimes the racehorses that we made our hay for, the owners didn't like them to have trefoil because it has more protein in it, but it's a sweet hay or it has a different taste than other hays. And um, some people described it as like the coffee for animals and that they loved it. And so anytime that I needed to bring the animals or move them around, I would always go get some fresh trefoil with, I mean, it hadn't even dried yet. So it was fresh grass and they would follow me anywhere I went with those yellow flowers. So just some farm knowledge that I never knew I was going to need to know, but it does help out. And here I'm, ter I'm tearing the edges of the two sides of my layout because it looks like on this sketch that they're torn edges kind of leading in in a circle. That was another reason why I was so excited to find the circle in my bag of goodies because it just, it helps show that sketch. And here I'm just auditioning it to see if I wanted to do the backside of the wood grain and sure enough I do. So I'm going to just grab a couple strips of that because you don't need to have a full sheet. And I'm showing you how I use the liquid glue 
and my Versamat so that I know that I'm getting exactly a 12 by 12 piece at the end because I'm not sure how much of that paper I tore off and this way by putting it inside those lines I know it will fit into my page protectors. This liquid glue that I use is the Art Glitter Glue. Again, there'll be a link below for that if you want. Under the video in the description, I'll have all the supplies used, whether they're retired or current, plus um, supplies and then my favorite tools. Here you can see, I, I think I kind of did good with this sketch. It was difficult since I had some bigger photos, but I really like the challenge that following a sketch does for me. If you want to follow me on any other social media, here are the links. Those will also be in the description. If you want to help out any of us that are playing along with the 30 days of sketches, if you give us a big thumbs up on those videos, it helps YouTube show them to other people. Here's another video you may be interested in. The playlist is in the description as well. Blessings.